Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn Python tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use Python's for loops to make your code more efficient. So for loops are a bit like while loops, uh, they repeat code, um, but unlike while loops they repeat a section of code a set number of times. So you might say okay I want this code to be repeated six times or twelve times or you might repeat a section of code for each item in a list. So if you've got a list like cat, dog and mouse, you might want to print out hello cat, hello dog, hello mouse. So you want to repeat through each item in that list. Okay, so let's get started. I'll give you an example. Uh, here today I'm going to be using the pythontutor.com, the live coding examples, because it's, uh, quite, it's quite good to show you really what's going on behind the scenes. You don't always see what's going on behind the scenes uh, when you're executing your code in idle or whatever you use. So this is quite useful. So let's get started. So let's say, for example, here we want to print hello world and we want to print it um, 10 times. Now, when we first start in Python, we're like, oh, well, hey, hey, brilliant. We can just keep on repeating, uh, keep putting in 10 lots of code there or however many we need to do there, that's 10, good stuff. And here on the output part here, it will repeat it 10 times. Well, that's great, but what if you need to repeat it a thousand times or a hundred thousand times or a million times? Well, it's you're gonna have to start write a lot of code that's all really just repeating the same thing. So how do we make it more efficient? Well, what we do is we get rid of all the repeated bits and then what we do is we do a for loop for i in range and then inside of the brackets you just put the number of times that you wanted repeating and any code that you want repeating it must be oops for i in range that's better any code that you want repeated and this is why it's saying it's uh, got an error here must be indented so what we're saying here is we're setting up the for loop for i in range 10 with a colon at the end. And then we've indented our print here to say that we want hello world to be printed 10 times. So we can do that. Now you don't have to just put one line of code. You can have two lines of code or as many lines of code as you like. So there you go. So you can see here, this here is printing hello world, goodbye world lots and lots of times but what if you just wanted to print uh, do this line of code 10 times and then carry on with your program well just like with if statements and while loops all you do is unindent the line of code that you then want to carry on outside of the for loop so if you look here now you can see it says hello world 10 times and then it only says goodbye world once good so there you can see it as a nice simple example. Let's show you what's really happening behind the scenes. So if we just close this one down, I'll just copy this. And let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the main bit here. And instead of clicking on live programming mode, which I did before, I'm going to click on visualize execution. So it gets to the first line for Ryan range 10. And this I here becomes a temporary variable. And you can see it here in the global frame. The first time round, I is set to zero. And each time we go through the loop, I increments. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Now we're not actually using I at the moment. That temporary variable, we're not using it. But we can use it. So, And how do we want to use it? Let's say, here we go. Uh loop number and then here if we put i so we're going to print loop number and then an i which is whatever that variable here is each time round it should now if we click visualize execution there you go so i is set to zero and it will say loop number zero loop number one loop number two three four there you go so it will keep going through and each time round, it will increment i by 1. Well, that's brilliant. That's all okay. But what if we don't want to start at 0? Uh, we want to start at number 1. 
what could we do there? Well, there's two ways we could solve that. Um, we could do it a nice easier, which is to put i plus 1, because obviously i starts at 0. So if we visualize the execution this time, let's have a look. Loop number 1. So it's taken 0, and it's just added 1 to it. That's one way of doing it, which is good. Or, if we don't want to do that, what we could do instead is we could change our range here. Range can be used in a slightly more complicated manner in that we can give it two parameters. We could swap the, Z, uh, swap the 10 for two parameters, and now the first parameter is the start number, and the uh, second parameter is the end number minus, uh, well, more, plus 1, really. So this is now going to loop from 1 uh, to 10, due to the way, and we'll look at in a minute how that works. Um, but now, if we visualize the execution, we will see that it starts at 1. i is the same as what it's actually saying for the loop number. There you go, and it goes all the way up to number 10, and that's finished. So, how does this work? What's really happening? Well, let me show you a slightly different way. If we went my list equals array, oh, list brackets range. Uh, 1 comma 10. What we're doing now is we'll take the range, this range function here, that will return value from it, and we'll convert it into a list so that you can see what's really happening. And now if we print, let's just print my list. There we go. So now you can see this range of 1 to 10 is producing a range 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, Sorry, I've done that wrong, because I've done 1 to 10. It's missed out number 10, uh, because it finishes 1 before the 10. Uh, there you go. And there, if you just print it, it will print out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, it's printing out the brackets around it, because this is a list of numbers. Good, so a list of integers, in fact. Good. Now, uh, before we move on, just to show you one more thing on the range. The range actually is a little bit more powerful uh, a little bit more useful in some ways. Let's say you want to print all the numbers from 3 to 30, but you only want to print every other number. You can set it to a an incrementer of 2. So it will go up in 2s. So now if we uh, do visualize execution, there you go. You can't quite see it because it's gone off the edge, but you can see it's now created a list from 3 all the way to uh, 29. If you wanted it to include 31, you'd have to change that to 32. And if we go there, you can see that it's printed it out, all those numbers. Uh, and that can work for any incrementer. So if you don't want to, if you, you want to go up in twos or you want to go up in fives, let's say from three to 100 or wherever it will drop around there. Visualize execution. There we go. So now it's created numbers that go up in fives. That's really, really useful uh, for a lot of different ways. So there's the simple version of um, using for loops. I also said before that for loops could be used with lists. So let me show you how that works. So let's say for i in range, uh, so not for i in range, for i in, and let's give it a list. So let's just give it dog, cat, mouse. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving an actual list there inside of the for loop and let's just print I, uh, I saw a and then I. Again I stands for the item uh, that time round in the loop. And again, just like the other previous for loops, we can print goodbye. There we go. So now, if we visualize the execution, so the first time around, here we go, it sets up a for loop uh, that's going to loop through that list. So it's only going to uh, loop through three times this time uh, because the, there's only three items in the list. And each time round, i is going to be the variable at that particular point. So the first time it's going to be dog, then cat, then mouse. 
So dog, there you go, I saw a dog, cat, I saw a cat, mouse, I saw a mouse. There you go. So that's pretty much it for loop for four loops. That's pretty much all you need to know. Uh, there's plenty more that you can use and you can look at more advanced stuff if you want to but that's a great beginners tutorial that shows you all of the basics. Thank you very much.